Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. It's certainly a pleasure to be back here in Israel, uh, a place that I love and a place that the semiconductor industry uh, first brought me uh, many, many years ago. Thank you, Lior, for the kind introduction, and thank you to Yaniv, Amir, and many others in the AmCham Israel leadership for inviting me to speak at this conference. I also would like to thank Ambassador Friedman for his outstanding leadership here on the ground. I'd also like to recognize many of the other partners here and many of the other AmChams visiting from around the region. It is certainly a pleasure to see you here. On behalf of the U.S. Secretary of Commerce, Wilbur Ross, and the Trump administration, I am truly honored to be here to join you for this important business summit, and I am thrilled to be here in my official capacity as Assistant Secretary of Global Markets and Director General of the U.S. and Foreign Commercial Service. As Assistant Secretary of Global Markets, I have the privilege of overseeing a team of over 1,400 trade and investment professionals in over 100 markets in the United States and 70 markets around the world. We are focused on four major pillars, trade and export promotion of U.S. companies, many of whom are here today, advocacy for U.S. companies, bidding on foreign government tenders, commercial diplomacy to address and remove barriers to trade wherever you find them, and attracting inward-bound investment through our Select USA program. We have an excellent team here in Israel, led by Susan Hedelman. Susan, please stand up, and all members of my commercial service team, stand up. Yeah. Thank you for your great work. The commercial service team works on your behalf every day, and they deliver. They deliver time and time again, and they choose to compete on a daily basis on U.S. companies' behalf or anyone looking to invest in the U.S. It is indeed an exciting opportunity to learn and experience firsthand the vibrant and dynamic Israeli business climate. The United States and Israel are uniquely positioned to be close trading partners. Israelis and Americans both value education and emphasize the importance of building a highly trained workforce equipped to handle the challenges of the 21st century. I learned this firsthand as then Governor Mike Pence's Chief Innovation Officer in the state of Indiana, and I saw this time and time again during each and every visit that I have made to Israel over the past decade. The Trump administration's accomplishments over the last three years have made it a great time to do business in the United States. As a result of the President's economic and trade policies, one of the top priorities is for the United States to continue to be the preeminent destination for the world's investment and new and expanded production capacity, not only by American firms, but like-minded foreign firms as well. We are a country that makes things, and we will be a country that makes things for decades to come. The Tax Cuts and Jobs Act of 2017, the capital investment deductions, and the focused deregulation efforts have all strengthened the opportunity for investment leading to record high optimism for doing business in the United States. In addition to supporting the economic growth of our nation in the historic deregulation efforts, we are prioritizing the American workforce by equipping workers with the tools needed to succeed in the 21st century. To accomplish this, President Trump created the American Workforce Policy Advisory Board, co-chaired by Secretary Ross, and senior advisor Ivanka Trump, and consisting of America's top business and education leaders that promote further education, training, and skill building expertise. We believe that with American thought leadership on these and other important issues, combined with the business communities of our like minded partners, such as the vibrant Israeli private sector, we will continue to look to the United States as an attractive place to invest. In 1985, as was mentioned, the U.S.-Israel Free Trade Agreement, the first of its kind, laid the important groundwork for extensive bilateral collaboration and trade between our two countries. In the 35 years since its signing, the language of our Free Trade Agreement has been 
amplified by the deep and extensive ties between Israeli companies, scientists, technology experts, and entrepreneurs, and their American counterparts, creating an enormous advantage for our two countries in terms of global competitiveness in key emerging technologies. There are other examples of these partnerships, most notably the investment in research and development centers by U.S. tech companies. Apple, Intel, HP, Cisco, and many other U.S. companies that operate research and development centers in Israel are partnering with Israelis on cutting-edge research and information technology that, ladies and gentlemen, will change the world. Let us not forget the long-standing policy innovations like the Binational Industrial Research and Development Foundation and the Qualifying Industrial Zone Program that have played critical roles in commercializing mutually beneficial technology and supporting regional trade and stability. Even with our rich partnership, we look forward to working with a newly elected Israeli government with an eye to increasing cooperation in our commercial bilateral relationship. Today, the United States remains the largest single country trading partner with Israel in terms of our bilateral trade, $34.5 billion in 2018. It's something to be proud of, and the people in this room make that possible. But the continued growth of our bilateral trade must not be taken for granted, given the significant increase of investment from China and elsewhere. We continue to urge Israel and all American trading partners to be aware of the potential risks of unmonitored and unchecked foreign direct investment. Just last October, Israel sent a very positive signal with the announcement of a new investment advisory committee to ensure that foreign investment does not run afoul of national security concerns. If you are looking to source a competitive and quality American good, service, or trusted supplier, please connect with my U.S. Commercial Service team here on the ground that is available here today and every day that you might need them. They work regularly with U.S. exporters interested in Israel and stand ready to help identify a quality American supplier to meet your needs. U.S. companies, as mentioned, have always embraced partnerships and trade opportunities of mutual interest with their Israeli counterparts, customers, and consumers. For this reason, we could not be more disappointed with the action the UN High Commissioner for Human Rights took earlier this month to issue a so-called blacklist of companies, including several American companies doing business in Israeli-controlled territories. We are adamantly opposed to boycotts against Israel and firms conducting business here in any shape or form. Let me be very clear. The U.S. Government of the United States of America stands firmly by U.S. companies doing business and encourages all American businesses to continue to partner and invest in Israel as well as Palestinian communities. Our partnership is also exemplified by the mutual investment that Israel and the United States make in one another's economies. While I'm not sure most of you are, while I'm very sure most of you are aware of U.S. companies' investment in Israel, including more than 200 U.S. firms which have R&D centers in Israel, you may not realize that Israel is the largest investor in the United States from the Middle East. As of 2018, that equals $38.5 billion, $38.5 billion of Israeli investment in the United States. This investment supports close to 26,000 jobs throughout America, often good high-paying jobs in high-technology firms across our country. The U.S. government is committed to making the United States the destination of choice for Israel and other foreign investors. To support that commitment, the Department of Commerce offers the Select USA program to potential investors. Our team on the ground here in Israel work extensively with Israeli companies to provide information and connections with cities and states across the country in accordance with their individual investment strategy. Also, through our interagency investment working group, my team can help troubleshoot any questions or concerns in navigating our federal regulatory system. They stand ready to assist you. 
For example, our team worked with Woosh, an innovative Israeli smart water station service company that launched its eco-friendly water stations in Dayton, Ohio, and Miami, Florida. Another Israeli company, Forecast, chose Masula, Montana as a destination to open its U.S. headquarters from where the company will develop and sell their decision support productive analytics solution. Aeronautics producer of unmanned aerial vehicles established its manufacturing facility in San Diego, California. It wasn't long ago that I recall visiting Omen Casting Group here in Israel in a kibbutz where they were operating. Omen USA will invest more than $15 million to increase its production lines in my home state of Indiana. In addition to those mentioned, our team on the ground is supporting many, many more investments that are in the pipeline. We should be proud of this relationship. Last year, more than 25 Israeli businesses, many of them in the high-tech industry, participated in our flagship event, the annual Select USA Conference in Washington, D.C., to meet with over 50 state and municipal economic development organizations, participate in workshops, and listen to senior-level government officials about the interest in investing in the U.S. We look forward to an even larger delegation in 2020 to take place June 1st through the 3rd in Washington, D.C., and you all have our personal invite. It will be bigger and better than ever before, and we look forward to inviting you. What may be of particular interest to Israeli startups at this year's summit is our focus on connecting early-stage startup tech companies to prospects for advancement in the U.S. market. High-growth international tech companies that are less than eight years old with up to $10 million in revenue and no more than 40 employees can apply to participate in the Select USA Tech Showcase at a discounted rate. At the summit, these companies can network with economic development organizations, international companies, venture capitalists, and investors and exhibit their products for destination into the U.S. market. If you are looking for a place to expand your portfolio, to open up a plant, or to start building the next great business or service, you should select the United States. There's no better place to grow your business. No country is so crucial to the global economy. No other country can bring the innovative products to the more markets. And no country has many top universities and invest more in research and development. We look forward to expanding on this great Israeli-U.S. partnership. If you'd like to learn more about Select USA and invest in the United States, I encourage you to visit our Select USA Pavilion, where you can speak with our Select USA team, as well as representatives from Arizona, Florida, Georgia, Illinois, Iowa, Maryland, Missouri, Pennsylvania, and Virginia, and Indiana, Delaware, and Texas. They're all here. And we thank you for being here. These economic development organizations are on the front lines, and they look forward to welcoming your business to their states. I also encourage you to reach out to Segal on my team. Segal, where are you? Yep, right in the back there. Um, she is a great resource to, hear, uh, to you here on the ground. By working together, we can and will make a significant difference to the future prosperity of our great nations. I would really like to emphasize the need for further collaboration on many of the technological challenges that we see and the societal challenges that U.S. companies and American companies are continuing to partner with on a daily basis. The future is ours. Thank you. Toda Raba. I wish you an informative and successful remainder of this forum. It is indeed a great pleasure to be here. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs>